All right, what's going on guys? This is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. As you can see behind me today, we are running the WDW Capra 3-link chassis mounted steering setup in this axial Capra. We've got it on some Vanquish straight axles. These are the D44 axles from the Origin. Should be a good time. We are out here at the airport, some fun, excellent technical terrain. It's gonna be a great chance to show off the capabilities of the car. Let's go hit the rocks. All right, guys, so we've got my Axial Capra with the three-link setup in here, and I just put in a Reef's 888 direct power servo. The servo is capable of 4S, although this car only runs 3S. I got it on a good trade, and uh, yeah, this servo really comes to life on 4S, but the ESC in this car is not capable of running 4S, so we're running it on three. But that's all right, still crazy strong. It's got good speed. Uh, always like having faster servos like that so I can wiggle my front end and shift it around where I want. So yeah, I can see there it's going to try and tip us over. Very, very nice. This car is low and stable, so I do like the straight axles for that attribute of that. So let's go ahead and get into the benefits of both portals as well as straight axles and talk about what, uh, what the differences are and why you may want one over the other. Now the Axial Capra comes with an excellent set of axles. Uh, I do really enjoy the Axial Capra portals as uh, many of my projects have Capra axles in them. Now, why would you want to go to a three link setup? Now, I should include that just because it's three link does not mean it has to be a straight axle. You can absolutely use a three link portal setup on this car, which is pretty cool. So you can go to the SCX 10.3 portals if you choose to do so, but Straight axles are not, having a portal axle essentially adds an extra gear set and you, they stack the gears vertically, which gives you extra clearance to your differential on the car. Now that added clearance, while a benefit for clearing obstacles, is also doing another thing, which is raising the entire car the height of that portal. So you're essentially putting a lift kit on your car when you put the portals on. Now, many good builders will do low center of gravity builds around portals where they lower the car as low as possible with the portal axle. However, a straight axle ultimately will be able to sit lower than a portal car because the axles do not hold the car as high off the ground. Also, the weight of the differential in the axle itself is going to be lower because it is not lifted up in the air. So basically what we're getting at here is that if you have portals, your car will sit higher and the center of gravity will be raised. That's kind of inarguable. You can build around that fact and make it better, but a straight axle ultimately will sit lower to the ground and give you a lower center of gravity. So that's one of the benefits that you actually get on this setup with the three link is that you can go to a straight axle and you can lower the center of gravity on your Capra. So this car is pretty dang capable and can pull off some cool lines like what we're looking at right here. It's able to just sit lower and hold onto the ground a little bit better than the portal cars can. Now I've got a lot of experience with Capras. I've got a lot of videos with them to prove it. And uh, I do enjoy both the portal version as well as the straight axle version. They've each got their benefits. Like obviously you get the added clearance and the excellent turning capabilities of the Capra axle. So I'm all for having Capra axles on your Capra. metal axles on these rocks do not like to let go. Not quite finding the line to get up this one. This is pretty wicked. And the clicking we're hearing is my dig unit. I've got my end point set to try and not burn up the servo. So they're a little conservative, we could call it. And so it's not engaging tight enough to it allows the dig unit to slip under extreme binding, basically. Okay, there we go. Should work right there. There we go. All right, finally. Holy cow, that one took some work. That was a good line. 
So this car sits lower to the ground, it holds itself closer to the rocks and allows it to do some more extreme angles on both side hill as well as inclines. The Capras with portals are a little better for more technical, uh, technical lines where uh, diff clearance is a real issue. And then this car also has a flat skid that I added on there and then we changed out the transmission to a three gear because we lost the gearing reduction at the axle. So we're going to go ahead and pick up our gearing again at the transmission. Now I highly, highly recommend if you pick up one of these straight axle kits and or one of these three link kits and you go to a straight axle, I really recommend that you change out to a flat skid with a three gear transmission. You're going to gain belly clearance, then you're also going to get gearing reduction back that you've lost from your portal axles. The stock capper transmission already struggled with portals having enough gearing reduction. So once you take those away, the car is very fast with a low KV motor, which makes your electronics work really hard to crawl and it will heat them up and uh, can potentially damage them. So I strongly recommend picking up a three gear transmission. You can do a cheap plastic one. You could also pick up an element stealth transmission, but uh, I highly recommend changing out the transmission to something with a higher gear reduction and uh, so that it will still crawl great. Now my kit was designed around the axial AR45 straight axles from SCX 10.3 cars. So the panhard setup is going to be ideal for the offset to the panhard mount on the AR45 axle. You can run other axle setups, but you may have to tweak the link lengths and the drag link setup for your specific setup. So just be warned that they're all going to be a little bit different, but you can always build custom and do what you want with these things. So if you can track down a straight axle kit from Axial, the panhard uh, link in there is what this car kit was designed for and it will all just bolt right up and work seamlessly. So it's an awesome conversion. I wanted to see if it was possible to run the VS410 setup with these cars, and it absolutely is, but I did have to change my drag link, which is the steering from the servo to the knuckle, and then I also had to change my pan hard, which is the axle to the three link bracket. <laughs> oh, a little bit of bad driving on my end. Well, let's try this one one more time. We're gonna need a little bit of a throttle up over the belly. throttle scrubbing in those tires getting it done left rear is gonna hit forcing that front right back down on the rocks Let's just drive straight try not to let that right rear dip too low in the crack right as it falls in perfect I love watching the suspension up close like this Now this rock spine right here is one of the hard lines that uh, I know of out here at the airport. It gets very vertical and we're going to end up turning on one of the steepest parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to this ledge right here off the passenger side and we're going to go up and then turn right around it. And if we get lucky, the car will do it. A lot of cars will not do this climb. I'm going to try and get that front right on top of the ledge, but I also can't go too far because I don't want to go too vertical. I do have 2.2 inch stainless rotor weights from Vanquish in this car, which I was able to stuff in my Spec RC wheels. Using the smaller diameter plastic beadlock ring from Spec RC on the inside, it will clear the 2.2 stainless weights. Need to back up. I don't want to like bump this. I just need a little momentum. I just need to roll through it. All right, we got, we got it. Almost. Come on, car. Don't do that. A rocker might save us or kill us here. I think it's gonna go. All right, that was close. That was right on the borderline. Very nice. And now we still got to go up and up and up. 
Last time I took this car out, uh, I had it out on some red rock and it fell and I smashed the nose into a rock and uh, it damaged some stuff, but the three link bracket itself is completely in perfect shape. So that was nice. It bent the hell out of my tie rod and it hurt it, but I broke a rod end at the skid, but it pulled it off. Oh, come on, it's so close. I don't want that front left to come off that nub. My left rear is stopping us. Oh, baby, come on. Yes, yes, yes. This thing's like 15 feet up now. I'm trying to use that little nub on the top driver tire. Left rears should get some traction in here. Up and out the top on one of the hard lines at the airport. Let's back up and take a look at this. So super cool obstacle. Started from down there. That's the tricky spot. And then it's got a real steep section at the top. And we're just gonna cruise out the top, go up a little ledge, and we made it. The car never rolled. This is the line at the airport. It's always been one of my favorites. I've hit this a bunch of times with a bunch of different vehicles. Not sure I've tried it with the three link capper. We will see how she does. And you can kind of start wherever you want and then end wherever you want. You can just keep going with it. You need to get the belly across this. This is quite the breakover. There is a drop off. It's pretty big off the driver's side, so I can't go too wild. You guys haven't noticed i've been using dig a lot i've got a vanquish metal three gear transmission and i've also got the hertz dig v2 in this i think there's been times where i call it a v3 it's a v2 i don't think that a v3 exists so probably just used to talking about g-speed v3s which there are a there's a v4 g-speed out now curious if you guys have tried one of those what you think it's got some cool features Okay, let's turn. That right rear needs to dip a little more. Yep, and then it let me scoop around that rock. And this is kind of an interesting thing to do. Instead of continuing to turn passenger here, I can actually turn driver under throttle and it will push that rear passenger along and it will help it get lined up for the pinch in the crack. The rear tire is now where I want it, and so I can keep going on in balanced driving mode. There we go. So it just helps get that uh, rear axle spun around that corner, and uh, overall just helps you get lined up better on the way out. Because if you don't get lined up through the corner, your rear axle will drop a tire to the bottom and it will flip you over. So that's one of the little tricks I use when driving through corners on long cracks is I try and get that rear axle as level as possible, even through corners, and you can use your steering to help do that. Get, but you gotta have a strong servo to do it. All right, well, I set myself up really bad coming out of that last obstacle for this one, so we're gonna front burn, worked out in our favor. Very cool. And we're gonna transfer over into this crack. This car is running just a little bit of overdrive. I believe I have an underdrive gear set in the rear axle. I'm try and front and dig across here. Hoping that left rear holds me vertical enough or level enough to not let me roll. And then we're gonna go four wheel drive and let it push. Damn, now nah, we're in trouble. Because as soon as I back up, it's going to try and unload that passenger rear. Yep. Not happening today. Well, I can't give up that easy. I got to give it one more shot, right, guys? Didn't realize I'm still in dig here. All right. Let's 
drive to set the rear a little more on top of that rock as we come through here. And so it's kind of just a balancing act, right? We want to keep that driver rear high on the rock to keep the pressure on the suspension to level the car. And we're just going to try and uh, rely on our articulation to allow us to get across here. Now that the rear is so high in the air, the suspension is no longer being compressed and it wants to unload, the driver rear spring is going to try and stand up and roll the car. We're losing our articulation here. And then I lost that front tire again. And it rolled again. Really not sure that I've ever made this line. This one is tough. Despite how much traction there is out here, there's just, it gets vertical, and then you gotta get just a perfect pinch and balance on your tires. And not letting the car unload on you. Holy cow, did I just do that? I've played on that crack a lot and not got that before, so. Apparently today's a good day. I'm gonna try and do a 180 and drop back down it. Okay, that made it look way too easy. That was wild. That was cool. I just pulled this one off off camera a second ago, but I want to see if I can do it again on camera. So real off camber, that front right just pulls it back up, left rear starts to climb, and then it's going to flex the car out and put a ton of pressure on that front passenger, and then lets that rear passenger climb right up. So that was cool. Worked really well both times. Now we're going to try and get across this ravine. Again, fully articulating the car. This car has a pretty good front weight bias with those big 2.2 stainless weights in the front so when it goes through a crack like that the front end usually controls where the car is pitched cruising along this ridge there's a cool line if we can keep making it forward progress here just gotta float this rear end across here and we'll be all right maybe it's a little too aggressive <laughs> see if we can get this front end across again Just got to get this rear end to stick without flipping us over backwards. Actually want the rear more driver. Kind of right where I want to be, but I'm diffed. Need that right rear to hit right there. As soon as both those tires get loaded up in the traction in the crack. I'm trying to float this front end all the way off the edge. Take some pressure off that rear tire. All right, there's just a, oh no, had it. I tried to dig, make it a little cleaner and I messed it all up. Now my rear end's not in the right spot. Oh, he had it.
Okay, float the front end in. Both tires are so close. I had that and then I ruined it. That sucks. I hate when I do that. I need the passenger rear a little more to the driver's side. Then I need to bring the front end back across. This is like, has to nail the perfect line for this car to get through here. That's it, that's it. All right, don't ruin it with the dig this time. Okay, we got it. Man, that was way harder than it looked. I love lines like that. My favorite is when they're super difficult like that, but they are possible just like that one. So really enjoyed that. I'm driving on the inside sidewalls right here and just the perfect little washout for the differential. That couldn't be more perfect. Now we're hoping that these crawler tread lugs will pull us through. Of course they do. I love the crawler. Especially in G8 compound from Proline. Pretty much the advice I give for anybody looking for tires is buy anything Proline that you like the look of, just make sure it's in G8. So if you guys are diehard Predator, let me know. Because uh, I got some G8s that I'll put up against any Predator. It just takes time to get them scrubbed in which is the benefit of Predator is that you, it scrubs in a lot quicker. But just G8 just has a longer life to them. Okay, yeah, come on. On the belly and the skid. Yep, got that sharp point right on the skid plate here. and keep the skid offset to the side. And then it's gonna hit our rear links and try and shuffle the rear end over, which actually may work out to our benefit. I need to get this skid on the other side of this point. It's kind of fun wheeling around the skid plate of the car. Look at the way that rock just comes up perfectly. Almost hits my shock. Super cool line, that was fun. I never wheeled that before. I really like that. We gotta go for a bonus line, right? Let's let's get rid of this rock. I don't think that's necessary. There we go. Now that's a bonus line. Sweet. Ooh. It's walking the rear end across. Very nice. So now right here, I'm gonna try and, yep, just like that. Try and use the inside of that sidewall to force that rear off and come up this pinch a lot straighter and cleaner. That narrow capper cage working just perfect. Fit right between those rocks. That was a fun line, guys. I really like that. I think we're gonna try and work our way through this boulder pile and then we're gonna call it a video because there's been a lot of fun lines we've hit, but I gotta get one more video shot today here at the airport and uh, I'm running low on time. So unfortunately you guys can't come crawl with me forever, but I do share what I can. So I hope you guys enjoy the content. Let's see. It's been a super fun ride and uh, I'm super proud of this three link capper chassis mounted servo system. Capper chassis mounted servo and three link bracket is the correct term. I always get that wrong, which is hilarious because it's my own part. So again, you can rob capper axles out of a capra. You're left with a chassis and 
you know, links and stuff. What do you do with the rest of it? You buy yourself some straight axles or even some three link portals. Get my part shipped within the US, free shipping. I've seen real cars pull off lines like this. <laughs> well we're giving up on the cave we're gonna move on i'm gonna take this lower line through here which is quite nasty Man, boulder piles are another another game entirely, man. Finally got that front end positioned where I needed. Okay, just locked up servo, locked up electronics. Yep, and we overheated it. Well, all right, guys, you can check out westdesertwheeler.com if you want to find one of these three-link chassis-mounted servo kits for yourself. I make them and ship them all out myself because I am running a small business. Super excited to have my own website and my own products to offer. Thank you guys so much for the support. It means the world. I greatly appreciate it. I've been doing this more than two years now full-time on YouTube. I greatly appreciate the support. Even just watching, liking, commenting, that all helps hitting the affiliate links down below, as well as buying stuff from my website. So thank you all so much. I greatly appreciate it. We will see you guys in the next one. Keep the rubber side down.